Hello and welcome back to part 2 of our beginners tutorial. In part 1 we created this setup here and I promised you that we're gonna spice this up a little bit. So first of all what I want to do is I want to add a gradient to my image here. And I don't want to do that in the end but it's much simpler to do it right after our original loader. So I activate my tool and add a merge and then I add a background tool. Well, I want this background tool to be the same size as my original loader. So the original loader says it's 2272 by 1704. So I go to my background, click on the image tab, 2272 by 1704. And then connect it to the foreground input of my merge tool. So out of the sudden the entire image turns black. This is because my background is actually black with a 100% alpha channel here and is merged on top. Well, obviously I don't want to do that. So, let me select some colors. So I now view again my original loader here. Click on my background tool and I want to set it to a uh, vertical gradient here. So I've got a top and a bottom control. And in the top I want to have something like a dark blue. So I just hold down my left mouse button while I pick the color and on the bottom I want to have something like that. Maybe a bit more red actually. Like so. Again when I merge this over top I get my gradient but not the underlying image. So I set my merge tool to overlay mode and maybe bring the blend down a little bit. Maybe I want to get rid a little bit of this bluish bluish cast here so uh, maybe bring the blue down in my uh, bottom here so I have the bluish sky in the top and the more dirty city look in the bottom. So since after that we do all our matte controls, cutouts etc gives me pretty much the effect I'm looking for here. Right, let's do some more after our 3D render. First thing I want to add is a brightness contrast. So again, I activate my render here, click on brightness contrast, and what I want to do, I want to bring the saturation down, say by 0.5, like so. But then again, I don't want to do it in my entire image, but only in the midtowns. So in that case, to my brightness contrast, I add a ranges mask. Just hit control space, ranges mask, and the ranges come again from my original render. And in this case, let me view my ranges mask on the right here. I want only to set it to midtones and choose a simple preset. So this is my mask, which is now influencing my brightness contrast which takes down the saturation. The next thing I want to add is a color corrector and in this case I want to go into my levels and uh, say uh, this up a little bit like so and then it go into my individual red, green and blue channels and we'll mess around with them maybe something like so and in the green Oh well, that doesn't look too shabby. And in the blue, do something like that. Just to color grade that a little bit. And since Fusion concatenates not only transforms but also color corrections, I just chuck in another color corrector just behind that and say, okay, maybe it's a little bit too much saturation. So in the master channel, I bring my saturation down maybe 0.8 ish like so then go into my midtones and say maybe tint that a little bit maybe like so and I uh, could take a bit more strength maybe like that and actually bring the gain up in the midtones as well maybe like 1.4 then go into the highlights maybe 
do something like that and again raise the gain a little bit and then maybe I want to counteract in my shadows for the yellowish cast and say well let's bring that down a little bit here maybe like so back in my midtones bit more here shadows well you see this is quite an interactive process and adjust it to your taste actually maybe the saturation could get down a little bit like so well that looks nice let's play this back so when we come to the night area I'm definitely missing some glow around the highlights so because at night everything glows so we can add a glow tool after our last color corrector but this is somehow too much so again I want to mask the glow out add a ranges mask which gets it input from the last color corrector and I only want to use the highlights in this case so this is my highlights ranges mask here and my glow tool actually doesn't look too shabby however in the beginning of the shot I think the glow is just too much so I probably have to animate the blend here in the end a blend of 0.2 looks sufficient to me so I right click say animate and in the beginning set the blend to zero So if I now scroll through my animation here, I still think the blend could come in a little bit later. So basically when night falls, which is around like frame 25. So I keep my glow tool activated, go to the spline editor, which now shows me the animation of the blend. And I say this should not be frame 0 but actually say frame 25 and the end of the animation should not be at frame 50 but rather say frame 40 so now I have my glow tool coming in pretty much when night falls giving me the effect I'm looking for well I'm still not really happy with the color so let's add a final color corrector here maybe let's play with the gamma a little bit here in the master Maybe like so. Actually, if we watch the tool, it's much better to see. And then go to my levels again and say, okay, master, maybe, maybe something like that. Brighten it up a little bit and then bring down the red and the green. And the blue tremendously. Well, that's quite nice. However, there's one thing we should observe. By default, the renderer only renders the image in 8-bit integer. That's the default setting. You can always change that. So now let's have a look at our tool here. Right click and say I want to view my waveform. So the renderer still looks fine. The first brightness contrast still looks fine, but on the second color corrector you see that we are actually clipping values here at 100%. And so apparently does the glow tool. Well let's work around that, go to our renderer and say I want to render my image in 32-bit floating point per color channel. And then you see that we actually keep those seemingly out of range values you see that the highlights actually act a little bit different but that gives us a much nicer look in part three of this tutorial i'm going to show you how to spice this up even more using some 3d modificators stay tuned see you next time